day of spring and we're kicking off a beautiful opportunity spring and not for not literally officially spring starts um next week but we have some guests that are going to come for a few mondays and build with us so we kick that off today yeah In May of do that, I would call my friend. He, um, he was murdered by a police officer in May 2014. His name was Dominique Franco due to tasing. And um, well, my good friend Ethan was like best friends with him at the time. And like, you know, we both are really close to this lady named Miriam Kaba. So a lot of folks in the city of Chicago were already organizing against like police brutality, police accountability. But uh, Miriam decided that we should all come together basically and really like push like forward. Like demo, but also for other victims of Chicago violence, like the Kia Boy. And as anyone ever heard of Kia Boy, I don't know who that is. For like victims like that, whose just stories weren't told. In 1951, the Civil Rights Congress um, included, I don't know if you guys heard of W.E. Du Bois, um, William L. Patterson, Paul Robeson. All these people came together and put a report together. It was 200 pages. It was super long, but it documented 153 racial killings, um, mostly done by police officers, but, but also done by, um, by vigilantes, right? So like someone like George Zimmerman folks, you know? Mm -hmm. We're going to take this to the United Nations, right? We want to bring an international spotlight to this. We go to the United Nations, and, we, and, we, and we're there, and we're telling them that you know, there is a there is genocide happening in our country and especially in Chicago and we wanna we want we want answers, right? But we have two minutes to present that. So our group had about thirty-five different reports in police crimes and we had two minutes to summarize all of those reports into one. But Ethan knocked it out, did a great job. So I actually wanted to just break up into some a couple of groups here. Um, and I want you all to write a really quick statement. If you had a chance to go to the United Nations, what would you say? One person said that they would blow everything up. <laughs> Somebody else True. was saying how they would just create a slideshow about the violence that happens. And they ended up going to the discussion of why it's only two minutes and not more. We talked about how governments have to look at it as sort of like a business deal instead of like how it's not just emotional. You don't have to do one big revolutionary thing to cause a change. It's just one little thing. And a change isn't caused by one thing. It's caused by tiny things built on top of each other over and over years and weeks and days. We live in nothing but racial burden of torture and despair or the dysfunctional federation that creates the foundation of genocide. We hope that there would be that hero that comes to save us from this tragedy, but it never comes. As for solutions, we don't have any because you've made this life the norm. When you're spending more money on military weapons and grocery stores, are you really here to serve and protect? Woo! Da 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 da
I mean, it's, that's what it is. Like, it's not like a murder. Like, whenever you can, like, whenever you can kill someone and walk away without, like, no handcuffs and go home and still eat white dinner and eat, get back up and you know, go to your regular life in this system and you're not arrested for it or you're not even, like, prosecuted at all. Then it's genocide on the people you're killing, obviously. And the system's down with it. So that's why we call it genocide. No, no, if I killed him just because he just, because of the system that he has, right? You know what I'm saying? If I just went up to a cop and just sliced his throat because of how cops just be, you know what I'm saying? Like, do you think in their system and how they law is, no. that when a, a, a civilian or somebody that is not part of law attacks them, that is a form of genocide? Uh, uh, police genocide. Yeah. Police brutality. Yeah, no. If you're benefiting off killing them, no, I'm not. Yeah, like, that's genocide. Like, if you're not benefiting, like, police, people are police and self appointed vigilantes are benefiting off killing black people who look like us. It has everything to do with power, yeah. right? And who gets to define. So, like, with the police, right? There's this legal terminology of legitimate versus illegitimate bias. Who gets to pull the trigger? Who gets to decide whose life is worthwhile? We'll come back and see y'all again next Monday. Excited to continue to build community with y'all. So thinking about arts and skills, how are we going to use that to fight back and to build? The victims wow. of terrorism here in the United yes. States we just had this whole conversation. Are us. Yes. Okay. Black and brown, you. Black and brown, you. The, the ways that we're victimized are in different oh. ways and through different systems. So one is through police brutality, but what are some other ways that we are victimized? Um, in the school system. School system. Jacinda was talking specifically about the being a female. Um, being a female. Yeah. I would say in the healthcare system too. Uh, yeah. Social, economical, socially, economically. Um, what do we want to say about this reality? Because the reality is. What you just, that's the reality. What is your, what do you want to say about this reality? I don't necessarily want to say true terror, but, but <laughs> that's what you want to say, like America, you're a terrorist? So yes. that's like America, you're a true okay. terrorist, but they, they'll never say that. Yeah, yeah. they'll they never they admit to it. They will never call any of their actions terrorists. woman is its own human condition and I am all woman now all hips that gave the corners their curves and curves a coat body with molasses skin though I'm not sure I want to be my subliminal name is E so you know I'm just a temperance of all atoms that I need bearing a wound with forbidden fruit so of course I'll never be a respected lady cause my legs into the room before I do just shiny stalks of gold kiss sex that make men say, Damn, baby, I see you. All oh, loud mouth and pigeon neck. Coin to coon compliments at you like I'm property. Bought and sold. Inflation's on smiles just going up to crisscross costs with consent. Got me questioning if my hips will swallow me whole every time I'm deemed as an object. Always wondering if I'm 18 yet to legally appease wet dreams as women. We seem to be the definition of sexuality. Though we are told to remain covered when our legs become rainfall, must only be familiar with virginal creeps cause a woman isn't sexy if she owns her sexuality. Just a hearted or a scarlet or a hustified Jezebel of a woman for taking ownership of her body like, how dare you, woman, birth from a man's rib, ever assume that any part of you isn't a man to gawk at, 
and to uncomfortable becomes the most used word in your vocabulary. Because you know cat calls aren't compliments, but rather a reminder that even the concrete you walk on is cemented in the tongue of man, a man's tongue. It can strip you of your dignity and apologize in the same sentence, not for degrading you, but because you are offended. Because we teach girls to just smile, and boys that two no's equal a yes, and there is no such thing as consent. If you assume that she wants it, where is no progress? Did you leave it behind in your mother's womb to forget that you came from a woman? Oh. Or to dispute the fact that you may someday have a daughter and she'll be your flower. That men just like you will want to the flower and they will, if not by the palms of their hands, but rather their eyes that can strip a clothed body right out of its skin and she will run home to you. Naked and embarrassed in all that she will come to know as womanhood, question mark spoon across her face and I hope you have the guts to tell her. Damn, baby, this is a man's world. Yeah.